Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about the coaching chicken and everything you need to know about it, the breed profile, care guide, and more. Before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the big fluffy coaching chicken begs to be picked up and cuddled. They have been seducing people for a long time now and aren't about to stop anytime soon. They've been described as head to toe feathers, an apt description for these beautiful feather birds. These sweet fluff balls have quite a bit of history to them, so sit back and listen to the story of the Cochin Chicken. I'll walk you through their history, their varieties, their general disposition and health issues before making sure they're the right hen for you. So let's start off with the history. The Cochin first came to be noticed in the 1840s. They originally called Cochin's China. In fact, we imported them from a French colony in what is now Vietnam, so oriental, but not very Chinese. The original Cochins that were imported did not look anything like today's. They look more like jungle fowl or malaise. They were tall and rangy and not overly pretty to look at. These original Cochin were given to Queen Victoria by Captain Edward Belcher. Queen Victoria loved them and she was quite the poultry enthusiast. Built this special enclosure for her loved Cochin Chinas. This started what was to become an obsession for many Victorians, hen fever. By this time, head fever had taken over the UK and US, fueled by the development of the Brahma and Cochin chickens. Exotic fowl such as these could be bought and sold for hundreds of pounds or dollars. The original Cochins were delicious layers by all accounts. However, once the fancy started to breed to human specifications, the utility of the breed suffered. They became prettier, but laid fewer eggs and the meat became coarser, a fate that has befallen many of today's breeds. It's tough to tease out which birds may have been crossbred with the Cochin. It is unlikely to have been any English stock since most British hens before this time were nothing to write home about being straggly looking and unattractive. The most likely scenario would have been a crossing between different sets of imports from China and perhaps Europe to obtain the required look. Now let's talk about the breed standard. The Cochin was recognized by the British Poultry Standard of 1865, the first edition of the standard that was issued. It followed closely in the U.S. being the American Poultry Association of 1874. Again, the first issue, it's classified as one of the three Asian classes in both books, the other two being Brahma, also from Shanghai, and Langshan from China also. They are both standard sized fowl and bantam varieties. In England, Cochin bantams do not exist. They are classified as Peckin bantams. Cochins can take up to two years to mature since they are slow growers. When they are fully grown, the male can weigh in at 11 pounds with the female weighing around eight and a half. The bantams weigh in at 30 ounces for the male and 26 ounces for the female. The acceptable colorings for this breed vary from the US to the UK. The UK recognizes the following colors, black, blue, buff, partridge, cuckoo, and white. The USA recognizes, in addition to the above colors, brown, gold-laced, silver-laced. The US does not recognize the cuckoo, a great shame since the coloring is so bewitching. Now let's talk about the appearance. The Cochin appears as a mass of soft, fluffy feathers, beak to toes almost literally. The legs and outer toes should be feathered so that they saw from side to side. You cannot see toes, only feathers. The fullness of the feathering gives them the appearance of being much larger than they actually are. Still, they are quite hefty when full grown and being around eight and a half pounds. The Cochin wears a single five point comb, which should be red as are the wattles and earlobes. The eyes are a golden yellow. The beak varies with the overall color of the bird, anywhere from yellow horn to black horn. The darker the bird, the darker the beak in general. The legs and toes should be yellow as is the skin. Legs and toes should be fully feathered, effectively hiding the legs and most toes. The only inner toe and part of the middle toe of each foot should be visible. The silhouette can be described as a rounded heart shape. The tail is fluffy feathered, but the feathers are somewhat shortened in appearance. Apart from the fantastically fluffy, Cochins can also be frizzled chickens. The Cochin is considered a large breed. If you've seen the viral videos of large chickens bombing around their runs, the Cochin may be the chicken you have seen or their cousin, the Brahma. Their large bodies make Cochins poor flyers and easy pickings for predators, so make sure you keep them in a safe space. Now let's talk about the frizzle Cochin. In many countries, in Europe and Australia, the frizzle chicken is recognized as a distinct breed, which is an interesting concept. Certain breeds are more prone to frizzling than others, Cochins and Polish being two of the most well-known. No one really knows where the frizzle gene came from, but it was first mentioned in writing from Al Dravandi in 1600. 
They were also mentioned in correspondence by Charles Darwin, in which he calls them Kaffi Fowl. He said they were predominant in India, but it's hard to know where this information originated since he never visited India. Initially, the frizzle birds were restricted to the Far East, East Indies, and Africa, but once noticed, they were taken to the UK and the US as they normally would. A frizzle hen equals 50% frizzle, 50% normal. A frizzle should never be bred to another frizzle. This makes a frazzle. Frazzles have extremely delicate feathers, and in some cases, be almost bald or exhibit patchy feathering. They do not survive very well without constant care and attention. Frizzled birds do not tolerate the cold well, since the curled feathers do a poor job of insulating the hen or even protecting it from rain or snow, they also cannot fly, so perches need to be set lower for them to access. Otherwise, they pile onto the floor. Needless to say, frizzles do get picked on, so bullying and feather picking can become a problem quickly. Now let's talk about the general disposition. Cochins are calm, friendly birds. Even the roosters are known for being fairly mellow. The boys rarely get aggressive, mean, or quarrelsome. However, the bantam boys are not so mellow. They can be feisty, aggressive, and fight for territory. The ladies make great broodies and moms. They will happily sit on any eggs you give them once they're in a the mood. They can also be used as foster moms for abandoned chicks, but I think this would depend on an individual bird and whether or not she's broody at the time. Like I said, they're easily contained since they're poor flyers. Apparently, a two-foot fence will contain them. In terms of confinement, they tolerate it well, but if allowed free range, they will spend most of their time hanging out by the feeders because they tend to be lazy. The tendency towards laziness and obesity makes them easy targets for predators, so they should remain in a fenced area safe from protection. Uh, they aren't well known for laying eggs. You'll be lucky to see 180 to 200 eggs per year from the ladies, but the good news is that like the Brahma, these ladies prefer to lay through the winter months. The eggs are described as small to medium size, brown in color, although some folks report them as moderate to large eggs. Now let's talk about the issues. The Cochins are prone to obesity. They're mellow, lazy, like I said, and don't forage very much, preferring to eat what's right in front of them. Given their size, low rooster to be preferred to prevent leg injuries. Many experts recommend that Cochins should be rationed in the amount that they are allowed to eat. If you have a mixed flock, this could not be easy to monitor, so weighing the hens periodically is a good idea. As with really fluffy hens, you really must check for uh, external residents like lice and mites. Cochins seem to be healthy birds and can live up to 10 years or so. Other than these concerns, Cochins are prone to get bumblefoot because of their size. Hopping down from roosts and landing on sharp objects can cause injuries and eventually lead to bumblefoot, sepsis, or even death. To prevent injuries, keep roosts near the ground. So is this a chicken right for you? They're not great layers, but they make fabulous pets and lap chickens. They're well suited for children as they are friendly and extremely mellow. They can become very tame and tolerate a wide variety of situations. Excellent material for exhibitions and shows since they are tolerant and straightforward to handle. So to summarize, the Cochin has won a place in many hearts because of the fluffiness. Many people keep them as house pets or pretty yard ornaments. If you want a bird that's a perfect layer, the Cochin is not for you. If you want a chicken that lays through the winter when the other hens take a break, then the Cochin fits the part well. The Cochin will break from egg laying when the weather turns warmer as Brahma hens do. They're wonderfully calm and laid back to have among your flock. If you keep Cochins, let us know in the comments below. We always enjoy hearing from you. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.